There are more than 6 million CCTV cameras in the UK, more per head than any other country on the planet. Cadena Constable 5 1 Mel. Operating 24 7, these cameras are catching more and more criminals in the act. Theft, armed robbery, street fights, anti social behaviour to really dangerous behaviour. All of it caught on camera. I'm Nick Wallace. I've been reporting on crime for more than a decade. I'm going onto the front line to see how CCTV is helping police put criminals behind bars. Tonight, the thugs who terrorise our towns and neighbourhoods. From smack dealing to street brawling, mugging to burglary, CCTV captures the criminality on our streets, waging war on the antisocial lawbreakers causing misery across the UK. Right, you're locked up. CCTV has been a resounding success. Nowadays, nearly seven out of 10 murders are solved using video evidence. But it's not just helping in the fight against serious crime, it's also tackling antisocial behavior and street crime. Across the country, drugs and alcohol are fueling criminal behavior, and the police are relying more and more on CCTV to crack down. In CCTV rooms across the country, it's the operator's job to keep an eye on the streets, to stop antisocial behavior, turning into serious criminal behaviour. Hammersmith and Fulham in West London is one of Britain's most densely populated areas. Here, some of the UK's most expensive properties sit side by side with pockets of the most deprived social housing in the country. CCTV operators like Andy Stocker play a big part in cracking down on antisocial behaviour. There's lots of uh, definitions for antisocial behaviour. You know, you've got a dictionary kind of definitions, but the way I look at it, it's, it's behaviour that um, most people would find unacceptable. It's the early hours of Saturday morning. For some, it's the start of a working day. For others, the end of a long night. Andy's always got his eye out for signs of trouble. In one of the residential streets on his patch, he spotted a lone youth, and his experience tells him something's not right. Whoa, shit. Where was he walking down? Was that North End Road or Star Road? CCTV FH. I see one male, baseball cap, grey shirt, and it appears he's got a knife on him. He's got a blade. He's walking along with a blade exposed over. And he spotted a group of girls in his pathway. With no police to intervene, all he can do is watch. Whoa. The youth is clearly agitated and looks as if he's on a mission. On his cameras, Andy can see the blade is at least six inches long and he's heading towards a residential area. CCTV FH. Mal's just walked across North End Road and is proceeding into West Kensington Estate. In Hammersmith and Fulham alone, there are almost 20 knife crime incidents a month. Some will end in death or serious injury, so the next few minutes will be critical. This could turn out really nasty, you know, the next person comes around the corner, he could, you know, quite easily uh, uh, stab. So it's really important that we keep an eye on him, we track him and we can guide the police in. The youth with the blade has disappeared into the shadows. Andy has to find him. That's him now. That's him. The police are coming into the estate now. If I yep, yep, proceed round the uh, youth you're looking for is just just ahead of where you are. Yeah, he's, uh, he's just walking up the uh, up the ramp. Stop, stop, that is the male, or well, that is the male with a knife. Mate, there was, he's in his 20s, he's a 
Across London, there are 1,000 victims of knife crime every month, many of them serious. Picking up stuff like that is great, you know. Um, you know potentially that guy could have, you know, proceeded on to someone's property, knocked on their door and, and stuck a knife in them. You know, we, we potentially saved someone's life uh, by picking them up and getting them arrested. This, you know, this is the reason we do this job. The council has a zero tolerance policy to anyone carrying a knife and CCTV operators are often the first to spot offensive weapons. There are 700 cameras across the borough. They catch people in the act, and what's recorded is also putting criminals behind bars. Making your way home from work, you think you're safe, but thugs and thieves look for places where you're at your most vulnerable. Listening to music, this woman is unaware of the two muggers behind her. It's a well-orchestrated attack. There's a third accomplice waiting around the corner to take the woman's bag. The robbers are trying to throw police off the scent. The bag is passed to the third man and the group split up. What they don't know is everything has been caught on camera. The woman is shaken and thinks the robbers have got away. But thanks to CCTV evidence, two of the men were soon arrested. Coming up, the battle to reclaim the streets from the drug dealers who think they can sell where they like, when they like. And in Rotherham, the demon drink gives police a Halloween nightmare. No way up, here we go. Britain's been labelled the drug addiction capital of Europe. In 2012, illicit drug use was identified as one of the driving forces behind antisocial behaviour and criminal activity. A serious addict will spend up to £30,000 a year on drugs, turning to crimes like burglary and theft to feed their habit. With drug-related crime on the rise in many parts of Britain, CCTV is playing an increasingly important role in the fight to clean up our neighbourhoods. In Hammersmith and Fulham, local authorities found a high proportion of theft was being committed by offenders under the influence of drugs. They break into cars, they break into people's houses, you know, they rob people. Um, it, it's all related, you know, people don't rob people for no reason. With hundreds of infrared cameras scattered across the borough, Andy knows the behaviour to look for, and he doesn't need to look far to find it. Obviously, someone uh, skinning up a joint is fairly uh, easy to pick out. You know, we've got very high-resolution cameras. The camera could be quite a long way away, and we can zoom in. We can see what they're doing really clearly. But the signs aren't always obvious, especially when it comes to street dealing. These men outside a pub in Shepherd's Bush appear to be friends. But to Andy's trained eye, there's something else going on. One guy's there, standing there with a can of lager outside a pub, which is a bit odd. Obviously, he's not buying his drink from the pub. It's one thing that sort of starts to ring a bells. Body language, their interaction doesn't seem to ring true with us, so we're just keeping an eye on them at the moment. Something dodgy's going on there. Andy's instincts are on the money. He spots cash and a packet being exchanged. Time to call in the cops. CCTV FH. Yeah, um, appears to be a drug dealer operating in Shepherd's Bush Green. Within minutes, the man is on the move. It's up to Andy to follow him until the police can get there. FH suspect is uh, proceeding west along Uxbridge Road. The police are closing in, whilst Andy keeps his eye on the target. The cops arrive. As they question the man, Andy spots him throw something into the bushes. 
think there was is uh, in his 20 years he's a white male slim built wearing a grey jumper Officer on the stop at Uxbridge Road, uh, suspect has just thrown a package behind him. Yeah, that's uh, the officer's now just going to um, collect the evidence. He's just putting uh, some gloves on and he's going to bag that evidence, uh, uh, which they'll be able to use in the prosecution. Yeah, that's a good job. You know, we, we've witnessed what we believe to be drugged in and was proved to be right. You know, we, we followed him quite a way on the CCTV, with the CCTV as well. We saw him uh, chuck away the evidence. Without that, you know, he wouldn't have been uh, arrested. And um, he's, he's actually been taken off the street. Antisocial drug use isn't just an inner city problem. It happens across the country. Areas like Cheshire in the northwest of England have seen an overall fall in crime, but drug offences are on the increase. Paul Hunt has been on the front line in the war on antisocial behaviour for more than a decade. The, the work we do is varied, no two days are the same. We spend quite a lot of time dealing with antisocial behaviour in and around the city. Um, ultimately, what we're here for is to make the areas we monitor safer, and I think we do a very good job at doing that. Today, Paul's monitoring an area plagued by antisocial behaviour, and he's picked up on a man who has form for drug dealing. I've just spotted a male um, coming from Northwich Town Centre. He's really heading towards Chester Way. Um, he was involved with some suspicious activity a couple of days ago, uh, whereby a member of the public had reported he was involved in the supply of drugs. So, you know, I've, I've got him on camera. I'll, I'll just see where he goes and, and what he's doing. Oh, appears to be tablets in a small bag. Camera control to any 51 in Northwich Town Centre, able to assist. I believe I've just observed a male in a grey tracksuit selling drugs. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. The man is under the nose of CCTV cameras, but has no qualms about selling to the local addicts. Without the CCTV, without our presence, without us monitoring the city, police would not be aware that that male had just sold items and received cash for it. Even on a busy street, the dealer isn't phased about concealing his wrap where even Paul's cameras can't look. Camera control 51, just for your information, the male appears to have concealed something um, down the rear of his trousers. Um, he's also got a, what looks to be quite a large amount of cash on him. Over. People who are unfortunately drug addicts require their drugs in the morning, um, and there are those people that will supply them. Um, it's a, a never ending fight uh, uh, you know, against that sort of activity. The dealer is on the move. You can see the police are arriving now. Uh, camera control 5-1, that is the male in front of you. He appears to be going down the back of his trousers. Over. Unfortunately, it's in a little blind spot of one of our cameras, um, so we've not seen. For a skilled operator like Paul, even a blind spot doesn't stop him from watching the officer's back. I can just see the, the officer in the window reflecting there. So although I can't see him stopping the male, I am aware that the officer appears all right because of a reflection. He certainly would appear to have been stopped. The man was charged with possession of Class A drugs with intent to supply. One less drug dealer on the streets. Stemming the flow of drugs into our neighbourhoods means going after the suppliers further up the drugs chain. When the serious organised crime agency had information that a gang would be transporting a stash of cocaine, they enlisted the help of the Western County's Air Operations Unit and their CCTV-mounted helicopter. As the white transit van left the M5 South, armed response units moved closer to their target. The man driving is thought to be the gang's courier.
the police make their move. As they pull in front of the van, the driver attempts to outmaneuver them, crossing the central reservation directly into oncoming traffic. As armed police pull up behind, the heli telly captures a package being thrown into a nearby bush. Armed officers arrest the courier and recover cocaine with a street value of a quarter of a million pounds. In Rotherham, the fortnight around Halloween and bonfire night marks the start of the winter party season. As families head to one of the many displays across the borough, more fireworks are expected as partygoers indulge in the nation's drug of choice. Alcohol. With a monster mashup of gunpowder, booze and mischief, CCTV operator Martin Franks is expecting to be busy and entertained. <laughs> That's a nice and trace. <laughs> Cracker. Check to see if they're old enough to come in. <laughs> For the pubs and clubs of Rotherham, fun and games like this will have the cash tills ringing. Booze is 44% more affordable today than it was in 1980, and we're drinking more of it and with consumption of the strongest alcohol doubling amongst 11 to 15 year olds, the real demons are often found away from the high street. Uh, we just picked up some use in uh, Swollen Est. Just uh, messing about. And, uh, this is when, yeah, there you go. The young kid in the uh, black sleeves and the grey hooded top. Tracky bottoms there, kicking it out and throwing it into the middle of the street. You know, I wonder what, you know, wonder how he'd behave if we did that to his PlayStation or his uh, his bedroom. Police won't arrive in time to catch them this time, but that doesn't mean they'll get away with it. We've got reasonable footage, and uh, local police officers um, on the ground will probably know who they are, so we can deal with them retrospectively anyway. If, if I'd have done something like that and a police officer took me home. It wouldn't matter what the police officer did, whether I was innocent or not, or they got it, big style. Which is probably what these lot are uh, deficient of. But it's uh, not PC to uh, smack or chastise your child in such a manner no more, which is why they don't give a monkeys. If we, if we had microphones to shout at them, I'd be sacked within a week, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Back in the town centre, there's trouble brewing between two witches. No oh, way up, here we go. Yeah, any officers town centre that can uh, nip down to the uh, new county? We've got a couple of females uh, getting a bit aggressive with each other. Yeah, these uh, have been separated, but they are chelping a bit. Just uh, show your face, Billy, and uh, see if we can't. Uh, Stop it before it get kicks off. Well, they've been spoken to. They've all separated. It's a bit of out and out, like you know, when we when we turned the camera on, they were you know they were squaring up, but there was no no actual uh, assaults or anything, like you know, just chelping at each other. With the witches taken care of. Martin spots a drunk relieving himself in a doorway. What do you think you're doing? I was having a piss, mate. 80 pound flying that, isn't it? Put it away now, quick. Right, mate, so. The drunk lad has just turned 18 and is out in town for the first time. How much have you had to drink tonight? About four or five pints, mate. I don't drink that much. Right. I'm a drinker. You've got a wallet on you, Dale? I have got a wallet on me. Mate. Just have a quick look at it, mate. I've only got my passport. And That's sound. Pass us your passport. Okay. He's so plastered, he thinks this is his passport. I think you should have read the, uh, oh. the unit calorie calculator. All right, Dev. That is my passport. No, it's I've lost it. That's not your passport, mate. I think you're, you're just about you're just at that stage where you've had I'm too right. much to drink and I'm you should right. be going home. The cops are trying to convince him the party's over and it's time to go home. Let's go again. 
fuck, come on. I'll buy the appliance, come on. Come on, mate. Take the jacket off. We don't drink, him. go on. That take, way. Take the go jacket on. off, get him. Go on, he's in a bit. Come on, take the jacket off, get him. See you later, dude. Come on. Less than an hour later, CCTV picks him up in a scuffle with police. It takes six officers to get him in the back of a van. Instead of heading to bed, he's heading to a police cell. It's last orders. Many of the bars are closing and police have managed to keep the clowns under control. Martin has spotted something going on in a doorway and has sent in his colleagues to investigate. Uh, we just picked up some argument going on, so they're, uh, they're just dealing with it. Yeah, we've got him. It's another teenager out celebrating his 18th birthday, who's also had too much to drink. You're getting a taxi home with your mate, all right. Demon drink, at it again, like, you know. Coppers, you know what the fuck you're doing home? I feel sick. Yeah, and I feel sick, that pissed off. Yeah, I am pistol. <laughs> 18 birthday, I want <laughs> He's refusing to go with his friends, and officers can't leave him lying in the street as they have a duty of care. Bob is just making sure he's all right. Thankfully, his lift arrives, and his friends succeed in getting him out of town before he causes any trouble. As the clubs empty out, the revellers head for the takeaways, but police know the party can soon turn into a brawl. Around the corner, there's trouble in the pizza parlour. What's going off? What's going off? PC's well-born and guest separate the troublemakers. Just calm down, calm down. The cops are trying to take the heat out of the situation. Any more swearing, you can be coming with me. Right, all right. right so I've had enough tonight. People shouting yeah, and swearing in my face. Well. So it's calm down. Chops. But one guy Chops. is coming back for more. Right. Don't fucking come right. here again. Look, what are you getting your heart for? Hey. You'll be, getting, lock, you'll be getting locked up if you don't get out. Now, get out. You don't come in here threatening people. No. What? Me threatening him? Either, either taking him away or he's getting locked up. Times have changed. The people have become more tolerant of bad behaviour. Despite repeated warnings, the man's appetite for aggro gets the better of him. Right, you're locked up. Drunk and disorderly. You do not have to say anything, but it may all be defended. Behaviour that's happened now was never, never accepted 20, 30 years ago. Well, that, as they say, is that for the evening. Thankfully, most of the blood and guts were all just part of the costumes. But for those who didn't make it home, the horror of waking up sober in a police cell awaits. Coming up, from your doorstep and into your home, burglars feel the pinch of being caught on camera. What's all around your window there? and a teenage criminal who hid in a wardrobe for 13 hours. If we had found him, we don't know what would have happened. With nearly half of all violent crime committed under the influence of drugs or alcohol, one in three people consider that their town or city centres are no-go areas after dark. The police and local authorities argue that we need CCTV, now more than ever. In Manchester, drivers filling up with petrol came face to face with a knife-wielding madman determined to get inside a car. Luckily, the woman inside has locked her doors as the man carries out his terrifying attack. Giving up on one victim, he crosses the forecourt to find another. After smashing the windscreen of a minicab, he gets into the empty car in front. Terrified customers are barricaded inside the shop and police are nowhere to be seen.
With no keys in the car, he's going nowhere. He has another go at the taxi, but the driver is determined to get away. The machete-wielding man disappears into a nearby estate. Despite the CCTV evidence, he wasn't identified and is still at large. Drugs and alcohol don't just cause dangerous criminal behaviour, they cost Britain a staggering £37 billion a year. And when it comes to antisocial behaviour, drug and alcohol fueled crime is a national epidemic. And no one is immune to its effects, even the police. Booze can give you a headache in more ways than one. 88% of criminal damage cases are committed while the offender is under the influence of alcohol. After a few too many, this thug decides to take his aggression out on a trolley and has a go at a cash machine. Caught in the act, the police were onto him in seconds and soon wrong-footed the inebriated yob. In Hammersmith and Fulham, CCTV operators are six hours into their night shift. It starts to sort of tail off um, till two, three o'clock. It gets a bit quiet, but there's still stuff going on, you know, so, you know, we have to be professional, we have to keep vigilant. Andy has his eye on a couple of likely lads who seem to have more on their minds than their next can of lager. Quiet everywhere else, so we're just going to keep the cameras on and see what they're up to. Andy's concerned they're about to take things a step too far. I feel a bit suspicious. CCTV FH. Yes, FH, on your monitors now, um, there's a male breaking into shop on Uxbridge Road, over. Yeah, these guys now, they, they, um, they're sort of, the body language has changed, they sort of spread out a bit and they're just keeping an eye. One of them's looking in at what the guy's doing inside the shop and the others are just sort of keeping a bit of a lookout. We're just panning out, making sure the police can actually uh, see where the shop is. Police are en route, but they're precious minutes away. Right now, he's coming out now. He's just, he's just hanging out the window. It's up to Andy to keep the group on camera. FHS suspect uh, has just exited the building over. Yeah, suspects are walking east along Uxbridge Road towards the green over. You're looking for three IC1 males, one with a blue uh, lightweight jacket, blue jeans and white trainers. He was the guy that actually entered the property. The group's heading into a residential area which isn't covered by CCTV. This could be game over. Yeah, stop, stop. Suspects to your left. Stop, stop. Cops turn up in the nick of time and all four men are apprehended. Um, it's quite unusual for us to see someone breaking into a property like this. Like this crew, a third of burglars commit their offence whilst under the influence of alcohol. CCTV, generally our CCTV is on the, on the main high streets and that, uh, which is generally shops, not much residential uh, properties. So actually catching burglars is, is a fairly rare occurrence. Most burglaries captured by CCTV are recorded by people who've set up cameras in their own home. Thanks to CCTV and improved home security, burglary levels are at an all-time low. But it's not just alcohol that's fueling burglaries. Drugs also play a significant role. In fact, up to half of all burglaries are drug-related. And when it comes to stealing from your home, thieves don't always come in through the window. In 
In Stockport, when hundreds of pounds of pensioner Malcolm Gill's money was mysteriously disappearing, his concerned family set up a pinhole camera hidden in a plug to identify the light-fingered thief. What it recorded shocked everyone. How are you? You all right? His neighbour and part-time carer, Lisa Cobain, was caught playing the oldest trick in the book. That's all right. What's all that on your window there? Oh, it's not. It's the summit shining through. And helping herself to Malcolm's money. In court, mum of three, Cobain, said she stole from the pensioner in order to fund a daily amphetamine habit, which had got out of control. In Yelverton, Devon, Rosalind Potter left the hotel trade to become a foster mum, turning her five-bedroom B&B into a home looking after teenagers. But as this CCTV shows, her safe haven was threatened when a serial burglar broke into the house four times over a six-month period. We were very annoyed that someone kept coming back to burgle us. It, th there was a sort of pattern forming. The police did advise us to put CCTV up. Um, we did do that, but by the third time, we thought there's no other way. When Rosalind came home to discover she'd been burgled yet again, she was alarmed by what the cameras had captured. He had picked up a poker from the fire and was actually walking around the house. It was very scary. Rosalind called police who came to take fingerprints and left with strong CCTV evidence of the burglar in action. That night we went to bed, no problem, everything sort of locked up. I say no problem, very nervous, very edgy. You're not really sleeping because you've been burgled again. What happened next, no one could have predicted. Her cameras had one final shocking revelation in store. The poker-wielding burglar was still lurking in the house. He hadn't broken in again. He never left. The thief had been hiding from police, Rosalind and her family, inside a wardrobe for over 13 hours. When he finally left through the back door, he triggered an alarm and was caught by police just yards from Rosalind's house. He was in the house. We didn't know where at the time. It's a big house, we'd gone in every room. Somehow we missed him, but if we had find, found him, we don't know what would have happened. It might have been a different story. There was one last shock for Rosalind. The burglar who'd stolen more than £20,000 worth of her possessions turned out to be someone she'd cared for as a young teenager. It was so difficult for a long time to deal with it all. You know, I still foster. It did make me think twice to whether to keep going or not, but I still do, still enjoy it. But it was still very nerving to know someone was in the house. Home CCTV systems are playing an increasingly vital role in helping the police catch thieves. One sinister gang travelled the country targeting the elderly. They escaped the authorities for nearly six months, but evidence caught on camera finally put them behind bars. In Hereford, the two low-life criminals were captured stealing from an elderly pensioner after talking their way into her house. The 80-year-old victim is powerless to stop the pair as they help themselves to her most valuable possessions right in front of her. Michael McDonough and Patrick Connors had been travelling the country, targeting the old and infirm. In four months, they committed more than 40 burglaries and stole £100,000 in cash. 
Because McDonough and Connors were travelling across police boroughs, it was hard for the police to attribute the burglaries to a single gang. In 2013, police installed covert CCTV cameras in the home of elderly burglary victim Philip Jenkins, not knowing the 93-year-old was about to become McDonough and Connor's next victim. He asked me if they had my permission to put a camera in there. I said yes. Philip's house was now rigged with CCTV and was about to capture evidence that would help put the thieves behind bars. This footage shows McDonough and Connors ransacking his living room while Phillips slept in front of the TV. Thanks to this evidence and an investigation by Avon and Somerset police, McDonough and Connors were jailed for a total of 15 years. But for their victims, the damage had already been done. But when you're, you know, on your own, and it's going in your mind all the time, you never forget it. Never forget it. Coming up, cameras witness the ultimate icebreaker. Oh, he's just gone in. Yogg's in Manchester on the rampage with an angle grinder. And thugs carry out one of the most violent attacks captured on CCTV. He's not going to get away with what he's doing. In Chester, the party season is in full swing. Revellers are out on the town and full of the Christmas spirit. CCTV operator Paul Hunt is coming to the end of a busy shift, but knows only too well that this is when things can get out of hand. At a city centre night spot, Paul has spotted trouble. It's supposed to be the season of goodwill, but these lot seem hell-bent on violence. So I'm currently watching uh, some males in the city. They appear to be having an argument. There's definitely an argument gone on. Uh, we've informed police uh, who are en route. I'm just going to continue monitoring the situation and hopefully it won't get out of hand. More fighting is breaking out and it's turning serious. One of them has been stamped on the head. It's not very nice. Uh, police have arrived. Uh, the gas, gas is being sprayed. As the cops try to round up the thugs, the ringleader makes a run for it. Now, one of the males is making off. He's the main offender. We're going to stick with him. Chap with a check shirt on. His mate's not too far behind. They seem to know these streets well. Unfortunately for them, so does Paul. After a few minutes, they reappear. Acting casual, they think they've thrown everyone off the scent. The male responsible for the uh, it assault has just entered one of the chip shops on Frodham Street. Uh, we've just directed police to his whereabouts. Whilst the ringleader waits inside, his friend checks to see if the coast is clear. But Paul continues to watch the chip shop. With a little luck, they will get up and move on and go somewhere else. Only time will tell, I suppose. Um, only time will tell. Unaware he's still in Paul's sight, the thug makes a break for it. But this time, his luck runs out. Here we are, police are arriving. Um, and even like he's not going to get away with what he's done. Yeah, they've, they've got him. Males, male's just been arrested. In Hammersmith, it's the wee small hours, but there's no let-up in the war on antisocial behaviour. It's early hours of the morning, just spotted this guy. He's been sitting in the park for a little while having a drink. So we're just keeping an eye on him, uh, see what he's doing.
The man's been acting suspiciously for some time. And he's pretty certain he's up to no good. And he's carrying something in his right hand. He's gone behind a children's play area. Where he's gone to is pretty dark. Um, we, we can actually see him. Uh, the cameras we got there have got um, infrared light. Looks like he's going to... Uh... Oh, no. Hang on a minute. That's disgusting. The man is unaware he's being filmed, but these cameras come with spotlights. <laughs> That's a bit... Uh, yeah, he's very aware we're watching him now. Oh. At the push of a button, Andy cuts things short. You know, having a crap in, in just by a children's play area is just absolutely horrible. And he's walking away rapidly from the scene of the crime. And he's holding the trousers up, he's put his hands in his pocket. And he's walking... Oh, absolutely disgusting. Really disgusting. Quite nice of him, he's walking straight towards the camera, so we get a nice good shot of him. It's quite difficult for the police to deal with, you know, um, yeah, they, they don't really have a time resource to actually be able to deal with that at the time. So, you know, stuff like that, we, we potentially, we'll, we'll stick this on YouTube and shame people into it. You know, it highlights that when, you know, you're being watched on there uh, and, and, you know, it sort of shames people into stopping, stopping this disgusting behaviour. When it comes to fighting antisocial behaviour, CCTV is the petty criminal's worst enemy. In 2011, residents in Swinton, Greater Manchester, complained of an increase in criminal activity on their estate. Police set up a CCTV camera covering a trouble spot. Within days, the camera had helped police arrest a wanted man and crack down on low-level crime. But not everyone was happy about the eye in the sky. These pictures show two thugs with scant regard for health and safety they've decided on a few modifications. And yes, that is an angle grinder they're using. It doesn't take long before they reach the cables inside. Amazingly, they don't get electrocuted. They might have taken out one camera, but it didn't stop CCTV halving the rate of antisocial behaviour in the neighbourhood. CCTV isn't just used to catch criminals. In Chester, the canal is frozen and a man is going for a jog on the ice. Recently there's been a couple of incidents where people have lost their lives, fallen into frozen bodies of water. So I'm a bit concerned that he, he, he's actually trying it again. The man's luck runs out. Ooh, he's just gone in. Camera control to 5-1, a male's just fallen into the frozen canal and he's trying to get himself out. Is there anybody who can make the area over? The man has managed to pull himself out, but Paul is still concerned for his safety. You never know, he, he could get hypothermia, um, particularly if he's got a long way to walk home. The cocaine courier was sentenced to four years for conspiracy to supply and also given nine months for dangerous driving. The wardrobe burglar was sentenced to five years in a young offenders institution and the man who relieved himself next to a children's play area is still on the loose.